First off, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so usually people people don't ask for how you doing nowadays <laughs> because they don't. Like, do you tell people the truth? Like, if you wasn't doing good, would you still tell the truth? No, I would lie. I'd be like, I'm doing well. <laughs> so you're doing good? Yeah, I am doing good. Okay, okay, I'm okay, genuinely okay. doing good. I'm having good. a good time. I'm here back home. I got my cousin kicking it with family. So, no, I'm doing really good. Interesting. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I forgot the hell I was about to say. Mm -hmm. First off, I appreciate Court for bringing you on. Um, Thank you for having me. For sure. Yes. Him bringing his daughter on my platform, I mm -hmm. feel like that's like him giving his daughter away for marriage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like serious. people don't. It's serious, um, yes. That's a, it's, it's a, I can't even find words for mm -hmm. it, but it's like a, to trust me with his daughter, that, yes. that's a big thing. Yes. And a platform to know I'm going to be responsible mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, have a, a, a solid conversation. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So your name is Rachel Renee. Rachel Renee, yes. Is that your name or is that your, your, your stage name? <laughs> so it's a little bit of both. So um, Renee is actually one of my middle names. So I'm technically Rachel Janet Renee Richardson. Janet is my grandmother on my mother's side. Renee is my father's mother. So I'm Rachel Renee. That is my me coming out to the world. Rachel Richardson likes to be at home. <laughs> so what was your other name that you was going to go with? Just Rachel. Like far as like podcasting and like to the world? Like, oh no, I was it was either Oh no, I it, I was either going to be Rachel Richardson or Rachel Renee. But I like Rachel Renee because I just felt like it fit my persona. I'm kind of jealous cuz I like the double names. Yes, I'm the double R. one of the double names yes. like Rolls Royce. <laughs> it just pissed me off. But anyway, um I usually don't even start off with the meat and potatoes out the gate, but I okay. feel like I want to tell I want people to know what you actually do and what you got coming up like now okay no problem so uh for y'all that don't know i am the co-host which is how most people meet me i'm the co-host of holding court podcast on revolt tv tv with my dad big court or court dog kansas city chief depending well, two on what two era C's. <laughs> two C's, depending <laughs> on you know what area are you from um but i'm also the ceo and founder of goat moves inc i am a tech founder of an all-in-one e-commerce marketplace platform Goats. Goat Moves. And what is Goat Moves? Goat Moves Inc. is an all-in-one e-commerce marketplace platform. Could you break it down for the um, illiterate? <laughs> like me. So, okay. So we are, so you have the most known e-commerce marketplace platform right now is Amazon. So Amazon is a marketplace, meaning that multiple companies can sell their products on there. So what I did was I created a marketplace that not only can small businesses sell their products, but they can sell their services and their digital downloads as well. I have a patent pending on the technology. I'm the only platform that is doing that right now. That is what makes Goat Moves Inc. unique. And we specifically target small to medium businesses so they can compete with bigger corporations. What made you go there? What made you pick that field? And was it a secondary yes. thing that you wanted to do as well? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it was a whew, it was a it was a pivot, or as somebody else okay. told me, I didn't pivot. I got out the car, hopped out the curb, jumped over something else. So I started off. Um, so I started the company actually in 2020. In 2020, I was here in Kansas City. I got stuck here due to COVID. So um, I was doing drug testing originally for the Kansas City Metro. So I was drug testing for the railroad. I was drug testing at the airport uh, and family court, and it was in that small business space that I noticed, especially out here, I was like, wait a minute, even though I provide this service and I'm the only person company that provides this service after 5 p.m. Cause you know, I'm coming from the West Coast. So yeah. everything I'm like, we need to be open, we up. So I was the only person providing this service after hours, but it was still hard for businesses to find me. So I was like, man, why, why isn't there a platform for also service-based providers that is also marketplace style? And instead of, you know, trying to have another platform Created, I started creating it myself for my business. So I added my cleaning services. I added DNA testing. I was making it to be the ultimate third party provider, third party administrator. And so then I was like, well, wait a minute. Why don't I just take it a step further and bring everybody into the mix? Because the new entrepreneur, we already know, y'all do, we do a multitude of things. We don't just sell products. We don't just sell services. We sell it all. We do it all. So we need a platform that is reflective of that. And that's what Goat Moves Inc. is. Well, how'd you get the name? 
<laughs> so the name comes from, so I got it from my uncle. Uh, he passed away in 2019, a little bit before COVID. Part of the reason why I got stuck out here. So I was in LA at the time and I was helping him. He was going through a lot at the time and I was sending him basically a care package from LA. And so he texted me after he got it and he was like, hey, niece, he's like, I got all this stuff. He's like, I don't know how you did it, girl, but you be pulling some goat moves. And so I was like, goat moves? It just stuck with me because yeah. I never heard that before. And I was like, okay. And then I'm also a Capricorn. So I'm, I'm like the literal goat. And I was like, but he didn't know that. So I just thought it was really cute. And then a couple months later, he passed away. So when I when it came time for me to name my company, I wanted something that was all encompassing, but that also reflected who I was and who I am to the people that I show up for. So it was Goat Moves. What was the, if this didn't work, what were you gonna do? I don't know, that's a good question. I never, I never considered that. I've never considered that until this very moment right now. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I really, I don't know how to answer that question. I just, once I locked into it and I, and I, once I locked into it, it was that. Once I lock into something, it's just going to be that. So, so did you go to college for that? Or did you no. lock in kind of after college? No. So I went to I went to the Art Institute of California in Hollywood. It no longer exists. I have an AA in fashion marketing. So I graduated in 2014. So I've been out of college for a little while. Um, no, I went to school. I was a creative, like I would say a business creative, a little bit of both. And when I was in college, I started, I had an online clothing store. So that's what I was doing. And I was just working. I was working, living at home, working in LA, going to college and just working. So fashion was one of the plans then? Fashion was my plan when I was younger, yes. But I still get to incorporate fashion into my marketplace platform because fashion brands will be one of the businesses that I would be targeting. Is it funny how that works out for you? Like you... You fool with fashion, but yes. you probably didn't even know where that would come into play at. No, you know but if I go to my original, original dream when I was younger, but I'm actually still able to live that out now, my original dream was to be a screenwriter because I wrote stories when I was little. And that's really my passion is writing. And I used to write horror stories when I was little and I wanted to be a screenwriter. Then it turned into I want to be an actress and a model. Then moved out to LA, figured out, wait a minute, I'm actually kind of camera shy. Yes, I am. And I am a little bit... Not socially shy, but in those arenas, it was a little bit different. I was like, ooh, I don't know if I have the temperament for that. It's a politic in that way. And so, um, but I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I knew I wanted to work for myself. So now with my platform, because I not only do I have the e-commerce marketplace, but I have a streaming feature as well. And my dad is my media partner. So I get to produce my own content, create content, write content, you know, be in front of the camera, be behind it. So all of my childhood dreams, I essentially am able to execute now. So it's, it's a blessing to be where I'm at. We can cut this out if we have to, this mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. um, did you write any of Quartz raps? <laughs> no, but I was there. I was there when you wrote them. Okay. I was there. I was, uh, I was feedback. Okay, for the rap. So we would be, literally, we'd be listening to, because funny thing with my dad, so I've been his right-hand man since I was born. Right, um, like as in right? Term? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, um. Right-hand man is in, we mobbed gotcha, up and down gotcha, Prospect, okay. putting up posters at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, I was there, all the studio sessions, when he was writing, I was there. He'd be like, what you think it is, monkey? And I'm like, oh, I like that, that's good. <laughs> you know, nine, but yes. Excuse me? Nine, I was nine. Monkey? Yes, that's my nickname. <laughs> Can we get into that? Like what? With two E's though. Monkey. Yeah. Okay. Talk to uh, my grandma about it. I don't. <laughs> and everybody right. calls me monkey, the whole family. Interesting. Yes. That is hilarious. Yes. Not really, but <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, so that just threw me all the way off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Monkey. Yes. Okay, we're going to let it ride. <laughs> let um, it ride. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to rap we 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 um fashion you go off to college mm -hmm. was you scared to go to college being you so tied in i feel like y'all tied in as a family mm -hmm. well actually i don't think you were scared because i feel like um 
kind of feel like he gave you the toolage <laughs> to really be out on your own and be able to survive in that. Mm-hmm. Can you speak Can I, to that? Yes. Yeah, so, so no, I was not. So actually, it was funny thing. So my mother is Nigerian. Sorry to say this. I just wrote this earlier in my note, right? You know how they say funny thing and it really don't be funny? Yes. Why do we say, why? why? Because it is funny. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to tell you why it's funny. So my mother's Nigerian, complete opposite of my father, super education in the church. You know, my father, my grandfather was Nigerian. So she's, you know, daughter of an immigrant. She was all about education. She wanted me to get a four year academic degree. My dad was like, I remember when he told her this and it stuck with me my entire life. And it is very true. He was like, you want this nigga to go to college? That's not a working personality, Yomi. <laughs> this <laughs> so nigga that's isn't you. Isn't me. Hilarious. He was like, this, this is not a working personality. And so, and I was like, exactly. And so I was actually trying to plead my case not to go to college because I wanted to just get out in the field, work, get my hands dirty, and then figure out what I wanted to do from that point on, which I still ended up doing. But I did get the structure of college. Well, And then I loved that I went to a creative college. So I got both. I didn't have to deal with, you know, years of general education and basically going through high school again. I actually got to get right into marketing, design, consumer behavior, psychology, sociology, things like that. So I was happy that I went. So he already that. seen you as an entrepreneur and a creative? Yes. Even back then? Yes. Did you... When would... Did you already know that in yes. yourself as well? Yes. I never, I didn't mind working. Like, I'm not the entrepreneur that, oh, I've been working for myself since yeah. I was 11. No, 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 I'm not that. I worked a long time. I worked all of my 20s. I've done everything from bartending, accounting, maternity, bridal. I've worked, there's a shorter list of where I haven't worked. Um, so I've always wanted to work and I wanted to get that ground up experience because it's nothing like learning a business when you are the first person on the front, like when you are on the front line. And then you see how that affects and goes up to management, higher management, the district, you just see how your actions affect that. That's an experience that you really can't get if you just always worked for yourself. So I do appreciate my working experience and just having that, going to college, having to hurry up, go to my part-time job, get my supplies. You know, I really got that college grind experience and I'm happy about that. Before I get to the why, a lot of people would assume being at courtship pops, you don't really have to work Mm -hmm. for nothing, (laughs) right? Yes. Speak to, like, uh, like no, nigga, I still did have to go out and work. <laughs> yes. I would even go out of town to go to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, what made that, what made you go out on a limb and go do that and work? And you probably didn't even have to. Mm-hmm. Well, so here's the thing. So I was, seeing, I was still at home in college. I was working. I have just always had that. My, I've had a good balance of just, just parenting like both parents in their own two different ways never let me get away with anything neither did my family i'm the oldest child i'm the oldest grandchild so and then like i said my grandfather is also was also nigerian so it was no nonsense in the house and it was still one of those things where listen you have to get your life for yourself and then there's just certain things that of course still under the protection of the home but you can still get that real life experience and then learn discipline and consistency it's nothing like having to go clock into a job when you don't feel like it yeah. i didn't want to go clock into a job at 5 30 after being in school eight hours and each class was four hours and sitting in la traffic and paying for parking and doing all of these things but it was character building moments and i've just always wanted to be self-sufficient i didn't want to have to run to my parents for every little thing that's just not how i was raised money or not access or not and that carries over into what i do now and why i'm able to show up and do what i do now because it's not just oh i'm that's my dad (laughs) you know well i'm me too and i have to get it from myself did you have any short or long-term girls when uh, say going to college did you mm-hmm. have like okay in three to four years I want to be here and then in 10 to 15 <laughs> I want I, I want to be here yes. and establish this you know yeah. what yes and no so I did when I was in college I, my plan was I just knew my online store was going to pop uh, I just wanted to sell clothes but I did want to pivot into other things I just wasn't sure at that time um, I didn't have the work experience or the life experience to really know what my faculties were and how they would show up in my purpose. It still took me a minute to get to my purpose. I'm 31 now, so I'll be 32 in January. And I would say it wasn't until 
goat moves until I was 27 that I really was like, nah, this is what I want to do. And I locked in on it and I've been locked in ever since. So the short term goal was just to graduate college, you know, figure that out, maybe get a spot out here. But, you know, life continues to happen. And, you know, you just work in, you move in, things change up and it just became like, OK, what is it that I want to do and what can I see myself doing for the next 10 years? But funny enough, which is, is hilarious, is that when I because I thought about this a couple weeks ago. Even though the road wasn't exactly how I thought it was going to be, I still ended up where I wanted to be, which was doing what I want to do, having my own schedule. I have a team that rides for me and I'm in my purpose. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I'm surrounded by family and loved ones. So I still ended up where I wanted to be. <clears throat> so the why is what I'm about to ask here in mm -hmm. a second. But I feel like right now, this is court's. Uh, LeBron and his son <laughs> playing together now, right? Yes. Not the end of his role, but mm -hmm. more so like, um, all right, here, here I go. I know I'm going to hear it all. I know it's, it's a lot of mercy. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot mm -hmm. to, to, especially because y'all are private. I feel like y'all are private yes. people. So for him to bring his daughter along now, that, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of, yes. um, I don't see Court as having patience on certain shit, right? <laughs> so if somebody say something slick, I can hear him responding. Yes. Uh, so why now? Mm -hmm. Why now? That's a, that's a good question. Nobody has asked that thus far. I think that, and it's funny, so I just told my dad this because, you know, especially in our community, we talk a lot about legacy yeah. and legacy building. And now he may not agree, but I have always said this. I am not my father's legacy. I'm not. I partake in his legacy because I have self-actualized and I am at a point where not only can I show up, but I can contribute. And it's not just show up on the podcast, but just who I am, what I've been through, you know, what life has shown me, taught me, and just the gems that I have also got. I'm able to just show up in a way that just helps him cultivate the legacy while also establishing my own. And because my dad also supports me in what it is that I'm doing, he doesn't just want me under him and just with him. We just make a really good team. And, you know, we're, we, we're each other's good and bad cops. I have life experience. I, I know how to read the room. I have people experience. He doesn't have to worry about me, like how he has to worry about with other people because what people don't understand is that my dad really has a huge heart. He's down to help any and everybody to a fault. I'm not that person. <laughs> I got a little bit, but I'm not that person. But in that, when you do have a person like that, when they're depositing so much into you, you have to give them an energetic return on their investment. So what does that look like? I show up. I'm on time. I contribute. I have ideas. You know, I bring resources. I bring things to the table. So it makes sense. And then also who I am. My dad, no, I don't care. He probably cares more about what's said about me. You know, even now here recently with this Tariq Nasheed interview, it was him probably getting more in a tizzy than me. I live for it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. You can say whatever, just say something. And I thank you for the engagement. That's how I get down. So what's the good and bad with working with your pops? Not like bad in him, mm -hmm. but like the, the, the good part and like the bad part of it. So the good part in working with him is that, yes, I, I am afforded a level of protection in the industry, around people, around men that most people, and especially a lot of women, do not have. So that mitigates a lot, and I'm blessed to be able to have that. And just having that feeling of just feeling solid because you know you got a soldier that's ready to ride for you. You move and navigate in the world differently. So that's the best part. What can be a con, obviously, is also it's my dad. So sometimes, you know, I just want to say something. I'm like, I don't want to say what I want to say. But it's my dad, <laughs> even if it's for his benefit. Like, we don't agree on every single thing. But, you know, I still have to respect that, okay, I'm in his realm right now. This is holding court. It ain't rapping with Rachel. I want to get at this person right now. But this is his show. I got to follow suit. So I can't always carry it how I want to carry it. That's what goat moves is for. So that's really the only con. We work really real, well together. He's my media partner and he goes, if it makes sense to me and he can kind of, you know, picture it, then he, he goes along with it. So that's, it's really no cons. And well, I will say just 
like you said, the aspect of now it does become a little bit more personal and public because it's not just, oh, you're talking about somebody I know, now you're talking about my dad or you're talking about his daughter. It's going to get a little personal. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't see both of y'all pissed. That would be a, a nightmare on the internet. You're not oh winning. Oh, my God. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be looking at stuff sometimes. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And I'll be on him about it. I'm like, man, why is he commenting on that? So I can, I can only imagine you, if you getting pissed, and, and you say he actually care, and you don't. And the some stuff he responds, I'm like, God damn, I even got to. He's very Fuck political, them. and people don't even understand. They're getting big court, Courtney Richardson. Yeah, y'all ain't getting court dogs. Like y'all getting, not getting nineties court. Like I tell my siblings, C's. yeah, they ain't they getting, they getting two, two C's. C's. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't getting four block. Like I was raised by court dog, transitioning into big court. Now my siblings in the world gets refined big court, but two C's in there though. <laughs> so do you feel like you've been you've been groomed to do this right now? Like you like. If you look back at life, like, damn, this happened. I mean, we did all this, mm-hmm. and we here now. Like, this is a, I understand it. Yes. Was there anything you didn't understand? It's anything, elaborate on that question a little bit more. Like, as kids, you know, mm-hmm. our parents would tell us to do this, do, that, do mm-hmm. this, and do that, right? Mm-hmm. And then now I'm like, damn, I see why she did Now that yes. I got a kid, I see, like, yes. God damn it. Like, was there any lessons oh, that you man. Kinda, so much, so many, and no, in such a good way. It's, and I think about this all the time. Now, mind you, my parents, they, nobody in my family, actually, they never baby talked to me. I never, literally, I never got talked to like a child. So, and I think about just the things that they would say, the lessons that they would impart on me. And it's something as simple as, and, I, and I've said this before, but now my mother was the disciplinarian. Okay, let me get that out the way. My father was more laid back. And even when he would talk to me, like literally, he, he's only whooped me like two times in my life. That was it. I don't even think his heart could take it <laughs> when yeah. I was a little girl. And, but my mother being the disciplinarian, but him being a philosopher of sorts, it was a perfect marriage in that sense. Because I remember like one time, my mom, and this stuck with me to this day, I took out the trash one time, you know, watching my siblings. I'm tired. Like, I'm like, man, I'm already watching kids. Like, whatever. This is enough. And I took out the trash, and I didn't put a bag back in the trash bag. And my mama got home. I was like, oh, I'll do it later. Never did it. She got home, and she got on me. Now, my mother never cursed, okay? So for her to even drop a damn or an ass or something, you know you getting her riled up. So I remember she came in and she looked me dead in my face. She grabbed me and she said, Rachel, she said, I'm going to tell you this. And this is going to be the last time. She was like, you took this trash out. You didn't put a bag back in. You're a half-asser. You're a half-asser. And if you half-ass this, you're going to half-ass in life. Don't be a half-asser. She's like, that's one of the worst things that you can be. You think if we half-ass, you could live in this house? Literally, this was a whole thing. And that was that. And because, my, like I said, my mom didn't curse. I was like, oh. She mad. Like, she just got off of work. I was like, okay. Nah, I never did it again. But ever, it, it's just little things like that that stuck with me. So even now when I show up, anything that I do, you're getting full tilt. It's, it's, you're getting everything I got because even if it doesn't work, that's fine. I didn't half-ass you. I didn't give you half-ass effort. You know, I didn't give you lazy effort. And my dad always came through. He would follow through. So it was like I would get church. And political correct and love and light, and then I would get the hood, like the hood and line. yeah, and and bet. So, <laughs> and if a nigga roll up on you, yeah, you you stand on your shit. You stand, you do what you supposed to do. See you that. did that. So I was raised like kind of the oldest son in a way as well. So it sticks with me. <laughs> it another, all sticks with me. <laughs> first off, you killed that mom's impersonation too. Um, yes. Being raised so tough, how can I say this without sounding <laughs> weird? The the mm-hmm. being a woman, mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. did that translate? Or were you always you probably was always a woman, but uh-huh. does this make sense? What I'm no, asking? I think I guess you're trying to ask. Are you trying to say how is it being a woman also possessing a lot of masculine energy? Or being raised with it. Being raised you, with so, it. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can ask probably, you can shoot He's not going to say nothing. Well, not even that. <laughs> it's not that, but it's like you can shoot with both hands. So yes. when did being a lady come in? <laughs> right. Okay. Um, resuming. Scheduled programming. <laughs> right. 
uh, I guess the I, get, I think I get what you're trying to ask. So both of my parents and my dad too were very verbal and they both taught me that as far as, you know, so my mother, I had a great example, literally. Like my mother is a career woman. She's an educated woman. She's a lady. She's refined. She Mom. is, she, she's a powerhouse on her own, but she still defaults to my dad. My dad is still the leader. And I've always known that even with her being the disciplinarian and being the main one in the house, it was still like, okay, but you're going to go talk to your daddy. So having that masculine and feminine polarity is like, I'm so God, I'm so blessed. I'm so thankful because I was just telling him before we got here, I said, as a woman, even navigating the dating arena, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of our men do come from single parent households, single mother households. I see the difference. I observe it immediately. Like I can, I can't explain it. I can't, I can give you little instances, but it's something that you can see. So having that real roundedness while also still having that validation from a male and a strong male figure while having that, you know, yeah. femininity and that, that divine femininity, not that, oh, my mother's just a pushover, that divine femininity. It was perfect. And same, my dad would tell me, like, I remember when my dad, when I first started, uh, you know, like experiment with fashion and, you know, you young, I'm starting to break out crop tops and stuff. And I remember he told me, he said, listen, he said, you getting older, you a young lady and that's good. He was like, but still keep a little bit to yourself. You know, like if you don't show legs, don't show no titty. If you don't show some titty, don't show no ass. Literally his exact words. He was like, so you always want to have a balance in being around my dad and navigating, seeing my dad navigate men. I do kind of navigate men the same way. Like I talk straight, I'm direct, I'm to the point. I'm not here to play with you. You see, I'm cute, cool, but we going to get down to business. So merging both of those is why I feel like I can also do what I do and maneuver the male dominated industries that I'm also in when he's also not around. So you have both the, the best of both worlds. Oh, which for is sure. Good. As far as the pod, did you always want a pod? What made you, what made y'all start to, to, to bring you in? Like, Hey, come on, you ready? Let's go. <laughs> Rachel Renee. Oh, we on. so she's a host. Now. <laughs> so, I did not. I am like the prodigal son that returned home. I did not want anything to do with anything to do with entertainment. And my dad, he will tell you, I was like, dude, listen, I was trying to be like Trey Smith, Will Smith's oldest son. That was kind of like off to the side. You barely know him. Right. I wanted my younger siblings because my younger brother wants to be an actor and my sister works on the set. I said, cool, y'all do that. I'm going to be on the back end. And so when I got back to L.A., my dad was like, you need to get your social currency up. Like, you know, just straight up. Like, you want to do this? Social yeah, currency Yeah, he was like, you need to get hilarious. your social currency up. He was like, you want to do that this? Now. I'm using that Please, no. I'm using that Doesn't it make sense? That is hilarious. <laughs> he this told me straight like that. He was like, you need to get your social currency up. He's like, you you want to do this? You want to do that? He's like, I, I don't know what that shit you're trying to do, but I know you need to get that up, though. He's like, you need to start producing content. He just told me straight yeah. what it is. Like I said, he, I'm raised like an eldest son. So I said, okay. And so I was like, well, what should I do? I said, should I get on YouTube? Should I do that? And he was like, why don't you come on the podcast? So he actually, no. Now I'm going to really tell this story. He bamboozled me. I was hoodwinked. Yes, I was. So I showed up. And yeah, I've been hoodwinked. <laughs> if you see, for those that have seen, talk to me. So uh, I, I, went, we, we, I remember, I it was a Ayatollah and it was Melvin. It was the, some OG LA gangsters. And so he was like, yeah, you could just come through and see the studio. See the studio. And I was like, okay. And so some told me, well, still just get kind of cute, throw on a little bit of makeup, but I'm going to just see. So I get there, look around. Hey, Uncle Ken, uh, or producer Ken. And he's like, okay, yeah, so go ahead, get her a mic. And I was like, hold on. Mic for who? Mic what? Yeah, no, I just wanted it. to see. And so, and no, I actually wanted him. I was trying to convince him. I was like, you could get Brenna Brenna. You could get Jess Hilarious. You could get B. Simone. He was not trying to hear none of it, dude. He was like, nah, nah, like you can do it, you can do it. And so I was, and, and the reason why I didn't want to do it was because one, I just didn't think it went with my personality. And then two, I had been off of social media for several years. Not even, not an Instagram, not a Facebook, not a YouTube, nothing. So I didn't know the whole social media world. I didn't know this podcast, that podcast, the whole just nuances of social media, I didn't know. So I was so, the first few episodes, that's why you see I'm kind of silent. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm just trying to peep the scene. I don't really know what's going on. But then same thing, true to form, a couple months into it, the, the, like the third round of interviews, he was like, 
I, I need you to kind of step it up a little bit. I need you to just be yourself. Yeah. Be who you, you are yeah. on camera. He was like, that's all I need you to do. He was like, you sitting up here getting mute like your sister. Like, just be who you are on camera. So that's how I came to be on Holding Court Podcast. You can't leave now. <laughs> uh, just, just the social aspect of it, yeah. period. You can cover a lot of ground. Yes. That a lot of people cannot cover, even men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So my homie, uh, Rudy, Rudy, mm -hmm. bro, no, Damo, he has a podcast called, uh, and, yes. and he brought you up to me about a year and a half ago, wanting to interview you. This is before we even talked to court. And when you seen courts, how, how long you been on, um, a year now, almost a year, year? Uh -huh, November. Yeah, he brought it up, swear to God, he brought it up. He wants to interview, um, so I really feel awkward. I feel bad for doing the interview because <laughs> I really wanted him to have it first. You yes. know what I mean? That's how much he wanted to do it. You know oh, what I'm wow. saying? So, okay. um, you're definitely needed in the space. Thank you. So okay, I'm glad he you. hugged with you. <laughs> uh, and sometimes that's what it takes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You can articulate. And like I said, you can cover any topic and then what you're doing, period. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so. I appreciate that. I do. For, so y'all got gold moves, and y'all also got a, what, it was a legacy one too, right? What was Yes. Legacy. So what is that all about? So when I came to, so when I came to the podcast, I was just starting off as co-host, but naturally, like I do, I'm a builder. I love businesses. I love startups. Um, I just love it. And so naturally, you know, with my dad, his lifestyle, everything that he does, people ask these questions all the time. Like, man, how you do what you do? Your body, how do you work out? What do you eat? You know, he's a family man. He's a husband. He's a father. He's all these things. So, and then now that I'm once again, also grown and have things to bring to the table, I said, why don't you, we need to figure out a way to like create something outside of holding court because that's about the guests. We need something that's about you that's outside of music. The last time it was really about him was when he was court dog. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of my general partners who was also a founder in the tech space, he's actually my warehouse and logistics technology for Goat Moves Inc. Um, he also, he had a partner in social media that created private communities for brands, companies, and influencers. And so when I sent him my dad, he was like, oh, yeah. He was like, we, we've done a lot more with a lot less. And, you know, he's really walking it like he talk it. So, um, I, you know, they pitched to him. I told my dad, I said, listen, I said, I really think you should do this because, number one, it's your community and you're independent of any algorithm, which already caught his attention. I was like, you're independent of an algorithm and this is something that can sustain itself. And it's your community wherever you go. And so um, we finally got to the name Legacy Builders, which I thought was just perfect, especially because I'm partaking in it. And like, I just gave you my spill on what I think Legacy Building really is. And it's a private community on school. So you can type in Legacy Builders by Big Court and it's my money motivation. I am a coach. I teach in around the tech space, raising capital, you know, getting people in, in, a, uh, in a place in their business where they can even are ready to receive capital. And then we have another coach that focuses on content creation, social media, teaching people how to monetize their scrolling, their time on social media. And then we have another coach um, that teaches them on e-commerce selling and uh, master resale, right? So it's a well-rounded community. We support one another. Even while I'm out here, I got to go to uh, Lux Nail. Shout out to JT with Lux Nail Legacy Builder. She's one of our now new success stories. She just opened up a nail salon right there um, on the off the plaza. So, yeah, we've had a lot of success thus far. So I can't wait until we officially, officially launch. So how was all this being funded? I'm just saying, do y'all get sponsors? Do y'all, is it just all out of pocket? Or like yeah, Big Court is the sponsor. No. <laughs> Straight up. Big Court is the sponsor. Uh, yeah, he's the sponsor on that. Um, as far as, so Legacy Builders is his, Holding Court is his, you know, Holding Court is with okay. Revolt TV. And then Goat Move Zinc is my baby, but he's my media partner for the streaming feature that we are going to have. So like Amazon has Prime, I'm going to have my streaming feature. Do y'all get like investors? So I get, Seth, I'm actually so happy you uh, brought that up. So I am in the raising capital space. So I am in the process of getting investors for our, for our venture, but I do rally investors for Goat Moves Inc. So you just, whichever way you want to go about that. It's a, what about like grant writers and stuff like that? Is mm. all so listen, I keep it a hundred done. I just did a video about this on my YouTube. I've gotten, in the four years I've been seriously doing this business, I've gotten one grant for $4,000. 
I don't understand grants. I don't understand how people get them. I've hired grant writers. I myself am a writer. I truly do not understand. So, but I'm happy because that made me educate myself and really get out here as far as raising money in terms of angel investors and venture capital, which is one of the hardest types of capital to raise. That's also the type of capital that black people receive less than 1% of and black women in particular receive less than half of a percent of. So that's what I'm into as far as investors. As a black woman, do you think you're in a, not a disadvantage, but mm -hmm. is, it hard, is it harder for a black woman to get in that space and, and, and maneuver around that? I'm gonna say yes and no. So here's the thing. I don't look at it, it's, to me it's all mindset, just like in Legacy Builders. So as a black woman, it's, and I said this on Holding Court Podcast, it's one or two ways that I can look at this. It can either be, I'm a black woman, it's gonna be so hard, they're not gonna like me on my hair, wait, or it can wait, be, wait, wait, I'm a black woman, and I'm coming in here, fro out, earrings popping, lip gloss popping, and you gonna get this, and you gonna give me what I want. It's one or two ways I can go about it, I choose the latter. So. When I go into these white male dominant spaces, I'm right at home. I love it because number one, nobody looks like me in here. There's only about two other black people. I already stick out. I'm 5'8", I'm six feet in heels. I come with all the bravado, all the West Coast bigness, okay? Because I, I, I want it. I want you to be curious enough to come up and talk to me. And then because I've done my due diligence on the back end, I've done the groundwork and set the foundation for my company, Success loves preparation, I'm ready for you. You know what I mean? I got the traction, I got the users, I got the co-founder, I got the team. Do you have what I need? So, and that's what I want people, especially black people and black women, or just black people to understand in general that yes, we are needed in these spaces, but you have to show up. You can't show up half-assed and then say, oh, it's cause I'm black. No, did you do the work? Did you, did you come to the table prepared? Did you even have a something that was worth investing in? So is it difficult to do? Yes, but everything is difficult also to go to work every day. So I just picked my heart, you know what I mean? It was also very hard for me to go to work every day and deal with a manager who I knew that I was a hundred times better than because they couldn't put a system and process in place for nothing. So um, I don't think about it. I know it's a real statistic. I know it's something that plays people, but I don't focus on it. I pour my energy into the things that I can control and things that move the needle. So my pitch deck, my users, my platform, my branding, my marketing, assembling my team. I make sure that Rachel doing what she needs to do first. And because of that attitude and I just think just how I carry it, people are willing to bet on me, not only monetarily, but with their reputation, they're willing to invest energy into it because they know by any means necessary, you're gonna get a return on your investment because I take it very seriously. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> How do you go about picking your team? So it's very organic uh, as far as that, it's, a, it's an energetic thing for me. So what I do is, is First of all, I make sure that I am in the space to say, okay, do I need a new team member or is this just something that I'm not doing? And not to cut you out. No, and no, I, I got you. And I'm asking this because court gets a lot of um, people wanting to be a part of the... Uh, yes. How can he help you? You know what I'm yes. saying? And, and people will just come with nothing. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say come with nothing, but they don't come with enough. Mm -hmm. So I seen him online saying like, like who can who should I invest? What are you doing for me to even mm -hmm. want to put a battery in your back even more? Yeah. You, ha you have to be doing, you know what I mean, making mm -hmm. moves for me to even help. So is that part of the, the the process as well? If you you know looking for somebody? Oh, I'll take you through that. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I feel like so one, it does start with you, how you carry it, you know, how you go about it. Because I let people know one way or another, whether it's my energy or I just say it directly. The goat is moving. I'm moving. You either going to roll or get rolled over. Yeah. So having that intensity and that ferocity, I think also lets people know I'm not playing, so don't play with me. And then two, 
being a woman, also the way I present, <laughs> I lean into that. It's a tool. I use it. I talk about this with women too. You ain't got to put yourself all out there, but show up and be attractive. Be pleasant to be around. I am pleasant to be around. And I tell men, listen, it's going to be a hell of a ride, but we're going to have a good time, but you're going to have to work and you're going to have to come with this. And this is exactly what I need from you. If you can't do this, you immediately are going to get on. And then contracts. But it's easy too, I would say now with social media, especially because I lean more into LinkedIn. That's where more so my demographic is. Yeah, I go through an audit. Let me look at your LinkedIn. Let me look at your bio. Um, we're going to you know, have a couple of meetings. I'll explain to you what I'm doing. I see what you have going on. Is there, is there an opportunity? Does this make sense? So like with my co-founder, shout out to Isaac Wambua, Dynamo Methods. I met him at the ACA Business Club in Overland Park when I first started the business, when I was still doing drug testing. And we were the only two black people there. That's how we met because yeah. he came up to me because somebody was like, oh, there's a Nigerian girl. You got to go see her. He's from Kenya. And so he came up to me and he was like, you know, today is my day. I said, huh? He said, I'm the only black person that could be here on Tuesdays. You got to go. And so that's how we met each other. It was a joke. We were just laughing. I was just about that. Was he yeah, joking? Yeah, no, he was oh, joking. Okay. We were laughing. Yeah, no, it was so fun. I knew he was joking as soon as he I just want to see you. I was hoping he was <laughs> yes. serious to see how you reacted to that. You know, I know you weren't going for that. <laughs> no, he was joking. We busted out laughing. But he said that. He said the fact that you busted out laughing, he said, I already liked you. He said, because I knew you shared my sense of humor. And that's something else that I don't think we talk enough about in business and also selecting your partner. Like, I like to have a little bit of a synergy because I got to work with you. I got to talk with you. You're going to be texting my phone. I don't want to be irritated with you. Not saying that I can't work with people that I don't like, but if you're going to be in close confines, like my co-founder yeah. and seeing my financials and all, and all that, no, we got to be cool. So um, the reason why I selected him to be my co-founder, which is like literally my right-hand man, was because... It was almost like we mirrored each other. Like he could see it. Cause I told him straight up in the beginning, I said, listen, I have no money. My credit is shot. I got student loans. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how I'm going to do this. The only thing that I can promise you is a good time and my consistency and my discipline. And I am going to get it done. And I'm going to make, make Jeff Bezos come find me. That was the only thing I could say. That's the only thing that I could give to him at that time. And he was like, I want to be a partner. I said, okay. You freestyled that or you already had this room? No, like I freestyled that. That was on me. That was just how I was in the car with my other cousin. And she just looked at me and I looked at her and she said, okay. She said, way to sell yourself. I said, well, it's the truth. Because yeah. I'm not going to, I want you to be able to make an informed decision if you're going to come into this room with me. And that's also what I do with people too. If I can keep it real with you and I see that you're not tripping, that reaction is how I need it to be, then you can ride with me. So what's your goal? What, what's, what's, the, what's the ultimate goal? For me as a person? All the way, person, <laughs> business, both. <sighs> okay, well, I'll start with my business because that's the easiest for me. So as far as so with Hold It Court Podcast, my goal is to, one, I want that to be one of the biggest, not only podcasts, but I want it to be a staple in not only our black culture, but just culture in general because the platform is needed the seeing a father, a daughter, a black father, a black, you know, black daughter, obviously, you know, we're working together, we're building together, um, we're, we're doing quality interviews, it's not messy, you know, we're not trending for the wrong reasons. And then we're also giving flowers to artists and entertainers that may, may not have gotten it, or we just didn't get to know them because they didn't have a space that reflected who they were. So I want Holden Court to be one of the biggest media and entertainment platforms. I want Holden Court to start breaking off into other channels, you know, like, you know, maybe we have a tech and raising venture capital segment. We have, a, you know, just other things that would help people. Like a writer in the nick of time. <laughs> Podcast and then yeah, yeah, right. or like earn okay. your leisure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like it breaks off into other specialties. So, and we started doing that with legacy builders. I want legacy builders to continue to grow and we get more people in, into the community and we can share in, this, in their success, help them get them to the level of success that they desire. And for Goat Moves Inc., mm -hmm. I'm so ready. So, we are, we will be officially, I can't legally say fully what it is, but. I have secured an engagement for my Reg C round. So here in a couple of weeks, I will be able to officially raise money for my company, both accredited and non-accredited. 
So my goal for Goat Moves Inc. is to completely annihilate, completely decimate not only the e-commerce space, not only the startup space, but the business space in general. Because what business was years ago and what it was supposed to be in providing opportunities and resources to families and communities is not what it is. It's literally just enslaving people now. It is. I don't care. We, we know this. It's systematic. It's intentional. It's no reason why three to four corporations should be calling the shots of billions of people. So we need to level out the playing field. We need to put more power and resources back into small and medium sized businesses because these are the businesses that are in our communities. These are the businesses that give our teenagers and our people with disabilities chances to make a living. So that is important. So that is a goal of mine to be able to rally hundreds of thousands of small businesses around the world, but specifically here in the US, and then to get the streaming feature up. I'm excited about that. We will be receiving the, the creators that will pretty much be offloaded and kicked off a of Tubi. So that is my goal for Goat Moves Inc. is to be to, to completely reinvent business inside and out. Pay my people well, you know, so they can actually live in the city that they're working in, things like that. You know, maternity leaves for women that are longer than six weeks. The baby's not even murmuring yet. And you got to leave your baby. Things that are actually important and that really help people, like I said, on a communal level because it pours, it's infinite. Abundance is infinite. So making business what it should be. And then personally, I just want to travel and eat and just make money and continue to be the goat and do what I want to do. Uh, it's really that simple. Food and travel. <laughs> So what do you do to decompress besides shooting AR-15s? <laughs> I uh, to decompress. That is funny. I have my me time. It's one second. Can you hoop? Can I hoop? Yeah. No. Jesus. I play volleyball and I ran okay. track. Mm -mm. My dad taught. He taught me how to shoot when we was younger. When I was younger, I said you was younger too. Well, you were younger. <laughs> when you grow up with your kids. Shoot or like basketball? No, he shoot. actually taught me to shoot. I mean, so both, both. So both. You know, he, so he both. taught me to shoot. But I for I did uh, volleyball and track in high school. But no, to decompress, I chill. I listen to music. I dig through conspiracies. I read. I sit to myself. My my decompress time is me time to myself. So what music you, you throwing on to decompress? <laughs> A little bit of everything. Morning and night. Morning and night. <laughs> Thank music. you, because I have moods. Uh, so I have my, I have a 90s nigga playlist and it's called my 90s nigga playlist. Yes. And it is, okay. that gets me going for, that's my like during the day I'm handling business, but I'm still to myself, but I'm in a mood. So that's DJ quick. That's bone thugs. That's ghetto boys. It's a spice one. Literally all the 90s West coast clad do or die three, six UGK AMW CMW. <laughs> All of them. You're That's, your daddy's child. This is, <laughs> man, this is ridiculous. That is my 90s nigga playlist. So that gets me going. So that's like my daytime playlist along with like obviously newer rap. Like I like Meg. I like Lotto. I really like Meg. I like Doja. And then my chill playlist is like my Alina Baraz. Um... I, even Lil Yachty got some, got that, that last little album he did was very smooth. I just crept up on it on Apple. I had no idea Yachty was coming like that. Listen, I was shocked. I, I don't. I've never yeah, I didn't know. To Yachty a day in my, Dude, my he, he got this song called Black Seminole. I, listen, the, the album is smooth. Um, I like, yeah, I just like smooth music. I like Sir. I listen to a lot of Sir. He's an LA artist, very smooth. So yeah, I have my 90s nigga playlist. And my let's go during the day, and my girl rap, girl power, and then my chill playlist at night. Rhapsody. Um, really? Yeah. So okay. yeah, I'm a hardcore. So you really '90s for real? '90s. I do no, and I like rap of today. That's okay. Let me say this. I like rap. I like Twenty One. I like Drake. I like Kendrick. Okay, they not like us. <laughs> I love it, but. That 90s rap, and maybe because also it, it's directly linked to memories and nostalgia and 90s nostalgia in Kansas City, but it's nothing. Like, come on, DJ, yeah. quick. I think you can't, like, gin and juice, right? Mm -hmm. What is Drake's gin and juice? <laughs> I, I can't, there's not a song that I can, like, in 10 years from now, there's not a Drake song I'm going to be quoting, like, gin and juice. Drake has so, bops, though. He does. I'm just so like that '90s feel. Like yes. we, we damn near know every word 
we can't from recreate the 90s. that. So it's more organic. I think mm-hmm. once we got online and, and everything is about views instead yes. of uh, like like feeling and talent, it just lost it. Yeah, because you know, everybody's just doing it because you can get paid quick off of it, you know. So. No, I agree. It's more. I think it's more manufactured. Everything is a brand, and like you said, money, views, and not saying I, obviously music has always been a business, but that the '90s, just yeah. the the whole the whole era, just gave a vibe that you just cannot replicate. And that's yeah. okay. And yeah, I'm I, it's fake not rain. meant to be. I need the fake rain. <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Even like, '90s, I need the I need the run. I need the, I need the half coat on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or the boots at the Oh, you know that, I mean? yeah, just the, <laughs> the one hot bop, the Drew yes. Hill joint, um, Chris Brown or Usher. Why you asking? I'm sorry. <laughs> not really, I'm not sorry, but. Uh, oh. Are we, just in general. I'm a, I'm a, I really like Chris Brown, and he's such a great entertainer, but I'm going to have to go with Usher. Prince or Mike? <laughs> he looked like don't embarrass me now. He was like, you better answer correct. You gonna hoof home. <laughs> nah, Michael, you can't. And no, I love Prince, but Michael. Mm-mm. Michael. Pop or Biggie. Pop. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because of also who he was outside of rap. Like I just I can see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see you that. You gotta respect that. Biggie's legacy is on point, but that Pac legacy is forever and a day. Yeah, he was ahead of his time. Yes. Like all the way it's around. so unapologetic, and I just, I, I love that, and I respect that so much. Okay, man, before we get out of here, if we, I do got, I, I do want to say this. So you, you say 31, 32? 31, 93. How old, so you're wise, right? This is going to sound crazy mm-hmm. to you. If you wasn't 31, mm-hmm. being how wise you are, how old should you be? If that makes sense. Like you're more like 45. Not yeah, like not like a not like a rude 45. You know what I'm saying? But like a <laughs> like you don't you're not a a, a, a normal 31. Uh-huh. But maybe this is how 31 year olds should be though. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that's why I couldn't really phrase that to really the, I don't want to make like so, oh, you look forty five. Like, no, no, not I guess that, somebody just like, said that in the comments. What what age would you give yourself? If I wasn't who I was, like so if I didn't have what I have now, how if old you're would not I? Thir- you're actually thirty one. Yes. But you I feel like you've been here before. So what age Oh would my that soul be? I feel is oh oh my God, right. I get you. No, that's okay. I, I say this all the time and I say this to my sister. I feel like, and I've said this even since I was like 25, I would say, man, I feel like I'm 25 going on 50. I feel like I've been here so many times. I'm almost tired of it. Like that next iteration, like when I go to meet my maker, I'm telling them, listen, don't send me back. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I've been here 10 times over. I'm tired. I'm good. I'm a, I'm a fulfill my purpose. I'm going to do what I came here to do because I know what I got to do. And after that, I'm going to max this vehicle out, take me back, leave me there. So I feel like I'm at least a couple hundred. Okay, we biblical. <laughs> we biblical with this now. Okay. For me to be responsible with, with my platform and in life, right? Yes. What advice would you give? For you? For me and to... Uh, a young lady, mm. 13 years old. Ooh, okay. Let me start with the lady because okay. that's, that's easier. To any young girl, I would tell her, and, I, and I'm so passionate about this, like beauty is a tool. It is not a virtue, okay? Cultivate things outside of your physical appearance that can stand the test of time. So your intelligence, your, your, your charisma, your spirituality, whatever practice that is, like really lean into those faculties that you can't see because that's truly, if you have physical beauty, you're blessed with it, it will enhance that. If you don't, it'll bring it to life anyway. And regardless of what happens in the world, nobody can take that from you. My grandpa would always tell me that nobody can take your education from you. And I'm a firm believer in that, not just formal education, but just who you are and where you you know, relegate your mind to. So that would be my advice to any young girl. And Stay away from whores, <laughs> even as a woman, do literally like create and cultivate relationships with other like-minded women 
that understand or they have a good idea of where they're trying to go and they understand that they don't have to utilize their bodies to get there. Um, that's very important because a lot of women, especially now with whole culture, it is a thing, get caught up in that. You don't have to be that to succeed. You can be intelligent. You can be funny. You can be a little awkward. You can be goofy. You don't have to fit into the mold of what social media is telling you how women got to operate now to be successful. Holes are not winning. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you brought this up. Mm -hmm. we, we had this conversation today. When you get married, that's solidified, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you buy a car, the title is yours. That's mm -hmm. solidified as yours. Do you think you should solidify uh, your friends? Like, should it be a something to, like, hey, you're my friend, and this is, how can I say this? Because we can go years without talking to a friend, mm -hmm. right? But I feel like if we solidify that we're friends, mm, we can saying. hold each other accountable more. Mm -hmm. So say, um, me, mm -hmm. I, I don't care about chicks. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a fuck my friend's girl. Mm -hmm. But I just don't care about chicks. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that I'm not your friend. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have that uh, that broad spectrum of like being loyal. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we should solidify yes. who our friends are. Oh, because yeah. I know like okay, I know he's kind of scandalous. Yes, it's my nigga, but like. Yes. I get you. He ain't really my friend I fall back. all like yeah. that. So should friends be solidified? Absolutely, 100%. And the reason why I say that is because, how do I say this nicely? Don't. I, <laughs> he said, nah, just say it. I, I say yes. And and I knew this even as a kid. Which and, is how do we? Huh? and how do we solidify? Okay, yeah, no, I get you. Um. I knew this as a kid because of my parents, which is why I didn't have a lot of friends to begin with. But even as I've gotten older, that group or the straight line became a dot. And it was because our value systems have always been what they were. So I'm gonna say yes, you should definitely, man or woman, solidify your friends. If you're, and not saying that you can't be cordial and cool with people, but as a woman, and it just is what it is. It, it, I, I'm not saying that I'm agree, but in the real world, if I go out with a group of women that are twerking on the floor, taking shots, getting messy drunk, filling all up on dudes, it's only natural that you would group me with them. Just as I, so if I saw a, yeah. a, 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 a group of dudes looking like gangbangers, even if the one is looking a little prep, well, you with them, you may just dress different. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you should solidify your friends because one, that's your network even as you get older and the value systems, what I've noticed don't change too much. Even from being a, being a teenager to now, we are still the same people. I'm just an older version of who I've always been. My best friend, the one who's, she's a health coach. She's always been in health and holistics. You know what I mean? Even, even in high school, she was, no, I don't want pretzel poppers. I don't want this. She's always been that. So I'm saying that to say that, yes, solidify, please solidify them because it may be lonely and it may feel like you're in the land of solitude, but when you get relationships and friends that mirror your true value system and mirror the healthy aspects of who you are, it is a, the quality of the relationship yep. is a lot better and it will be able to sustain the test of time. And as far as to you with your platform, and which is great, um, I would just recommend and just advise to keep going. You know, keep going. Don't be afraid to get creative. Uh, collaboration is everything. Don't be afraid to collaborate with all, with other like-minded people and continue. Don't get discouraged if you're not seeing an immediate return because you're not being messy and trying to do it like everybody else. It's not sustainable. Create something that can stand the test of time, which is quality interviews, a good time, and it'll it'll be a legacy that you're proud of and something that you'll be able to show your kids or if people bring it up, you're not embarrassed, like, oh, I wish I didn't do that or put that out. Oh, I don't want to be trending for that. Like, lean into that, and your tribe will continue to find you. People will continue to find you and support you. And that's true because doing this, I learned this was now a responsibility more than just shooting the shit. Yes. You know, a, a lot of people got a lot of things going. So it turned my business mind up opposed to just being a kid and just finding clips just to post. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just being more responsible with yourself and your platform. It's power and words. Just like you said. Yeah, it's definitely power mm -hmm. and words. So, um, and your words are your legacy yeah. too. And I learned that the good and the hard way. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, birds of the feather fly together, which is true. Yes. So how can we help out anybody if we still doing 
a bunch of BS. So I wanted to change me. Cause I was in a group, a pod group, mm-hmm. and I was the one that was just. I'm the I'm the argumentative. I'm just <laughs> I'm just always the one. You yes. know what I'm saying? Which wasn't bad, Mm-mm. but it just helped me to realize like, you know, maybe it is me. You know what I'm saying? I got to change. I'm not going to change me. No. But just, but just change the approach. Redirect uh, your energy. Your, exactly. So. Because I'm that too. I'm the assertive director. That's why he want me on the podcast. Because I don't mind. Listen, I'm going to give you these facts. I'm going to give you these statistics. Now what you got to say? No, 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 no. Come back. You know, I'm going to back you against the corner. But I did it and I, I've learned to do that and temper that part about myself and say, no, it's not that I have to be less assertive and less who I am. I just, when my heart space did shift, I came, I come more from a space of compassion now and understanding versus trying to get at you. You know what I mean? Even though I'm going to get at you. Yeah. Um, but that's needed. You know what I mean? You can still be a warrior and still be who you are. Just be who you are in a warrior from a good heart space. You're the next Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I, I feel safe to say uh, we in good hands. With, with just where y'all at and what y'all doing. Yes. Um, I, did, I didn't near see it as that. Like, when, when, he, when he first brought his daughter on, it's like, I hear go another nigga bring yep. his <laughs> daughter on. But now I see <laughs> I why. Not saying that I just thought that. But no, I love that. Until I you really meet you or listen to you, you see why he has so much faith and he feels, um, feels good about you being his daughter as well. <laughs> Thank like, you. Like, it's an, it's an accomplishment accomplishments it's an accomplishment because just like you said you got girls twerking you got them these girls are everywhere nowadays and you are pushing yourself and him you know what it is whole culture is what gangster rap was to dudes in the 90s that's what it is for women now it's the same effect so like how dudes is like man rap was everywhere it was everywhere i just that was cool that's how it is now that's what whole culture is for women even the even in the relationship space you see it oh he ain't got a bag to hell with him like Okay, I'm glad my mama didn't think that (laughs) because we wouldn't be here. So, (laughs) and it's crazy, like the girls are the new niggas. Yeah, they're bold now. It's kind of like the niggas got to be subdued. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You got to block numbers and like, Mm -hmm. nah. Like they, (laughs) they whistling at you now. You know what I'm saying? No, they tough out here. They're tough. So it's just, it's just crazy. We got one like to live. People think we got we. People think we got all day, and we don't. Mm-hmm, you know, so mm-hmm. I appreciate y'all for just pushing life, not even just the culture, but just life. Thank you. Because yes. y'all don't have to do it. Y'all could just mm-hmm. sit and just just chill in the wind. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and it's hard work, and people don't understand that. Like y'all here in in Missouri, like mm-hmm. doing interviews and still pushing. Like people just see all the results and think there's no work being mm-hmm. behind it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It takes Fourth years. Ju- it's Fourth of July weekend. Yes. Coming up, and y'all still working. Mm-hmm. So, like, and people do not work. So, I, it, it, we can talk all day on that, though. But, <laughs> um, appreciate y'all for coming out. Yes, thank you for having me again, truly. Um, for sure. Mm-hmm. This won't be the last, man. We're going to, we're going to, I had another thing. We're we just going to leave it. We're we going to leave it at that. I appreciate good. you.